Hello everyone, it's me Loki, and I'm back with another Jigaily Lost video. It's actually been a, quite a long time, um, mainly because, you know, Jigaily said it was going to slow down because of Corona, so uh, it's really kind of slowed down the video production side of it because I've already kind of at the point where I'm, I've done basically everything. Also, the summer heat is here and my brain is fried, um, so that doesn't help. So if I can't think of good Dragalia videos, I usually don't upload one. And, no, and of course, not to say that all my Dragalia videos are good. Some people would argue they're very bad. Everyone who saw that people video. Anyway, that's not the point. Let's get into what today we talking about. There's a brand new event coming. Finally, the new event, the Nadine and Linnea's United Front. It will be here on the 11th at 11 p.m., which means basically once um, Time Worn Torment is done, it will be up. There's no real info on it. The data mines don't really have anything really, uh, to be honest, to be true. So it's just kind of waiting around a little bit. Um, so that's cool. I like that there's a new event coming. It's been a very long time since the last one, but again, I'm not really super angry about it just because, you know, Corona stuff, man. I would much, much rather have the devs be safe than to push them to continuously make a gacha game. That's, that's just kind of wrong in my views. But that's one part of it. The next part of it is I wanted to kind of read the Dragalia Lost Director feedback responding to player feedback. So I have not read this yet, so let's get into it. Um, how long is this? It's not terribly long. So I'll read this and then we'll talk about it. And that's it. And I hope you like this video. It's been a very long time since we've done a Dragalia video, so hopefully I can get back into the swing of swings. Swing of swings? What? Swing of things. We've received feedback that players do not have enough rainbow orbs and would- Oh my god, yes. Uh, we've received feedback that players do not have enough rainbow orbs and would like a master difficulty for the elemental ruins. Okada. Insufficient rainbow orbs was the feedback we received the, mo uh, the most this time- What? We received the most this time. With the increase in materials required to upgrade adventurers, the maximum level of facilities being raised, rainbow orbs have become much more necessary. We will be making rainbow orbs available periodically during events, so I hope players will thoroughly play them. In regards to massive difficulty for the elemental ruins, that is not something in the immediate plans, but I do want to consider it. Also, the orbs required to unlock nodes in the mana spiral are currently available by playing main campaign on very hard difficulty, and going forward, I hope to have increased drop events in those quests. I mean, hmm, that's not really an answer. That's not what we want, dude. Unless, let's see how much rainbow orbs are going to be in the event. Actually, to be fair, you also said that um, the tomes were going to be an event, and we've had an event and there was no tomes. So until I see physically a buttload, a hundred rainbow orbs in that damn shop, I will not believe what this man says. It just feels like too many times he's kind of said like, oh yeah, it'll be here, and then it turns out like your solution was bad and you should feel bad. It was just horrible. Um... If they were not thinking of a master difficulty for Elemental Ruins, I would suggest they freaking start it right now, because <laughs> it's needed. Um, more than anything, I would love that, because Rainbow Orbs are such a commodity. Not a commodity. They're so rare, and for no reason. It's dumb. Alright, next question. There was feedback that players would like Silver Albums to be easier to collect during raid events. As things are, players are encouraged to play the beginner difficulty raid, but the event format and difficulty has changed significantly since the release of the game. We will continue to make gradual adjustments to change the content to better suit its current state. We're looking forward to seeing what adjustments are made to better suit the current state of the game. I actually currently, you know what, I'm gonna actually kinda disagree on this, because I think the, the current way of getting silver is fine. The only thing that's kind of annoying is trying specifically to get the silver um, key when it's a rerun. During an event like this where it's super long, you have plenty of time to get that key for silver because you're just like constantly playing the raid event anyway. So, I don't know. I always thought that silver was, until recently actually, I thought that there should be a higher drop rate for silvers, but I actually think that it's currently fine the way it is. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know, give, tell me how you feel about this one specifically, because this one, it's, it's actually kind of rare for me to kind of disagree on this one, but I disagree on that. I think it's currently balanced perfectly fine. Um, there's feedback that players cannot complete the normal endeavors for the main campaigns. One piece of feedback we received quite frequently was that it was hard to tell what weapons to craft. Starting in Chapter 12 of the main campaign, there was an endeavor that the game will prompt you to complete. If you follow the endeavor, you will be able to craft the weapon, but if you don't complete the endeavor and obtain the award, the reward, 
you will not be able to unlock the story. I think that some part of that are, I think some parts of that are a bit confusing. So please pay close attention to as you progress. We do plan to make improvements here as well. Uh, I see. So it's important to remember the progress all the way, except in the reward. I think it's really more that people know he's misunderstanding this. We don't want endeavors like that. That endeavor just fucking sucks, to be 100% honest with you. The endeavor that's like, literally, stop what you're doing, go make a weapon, that's horrible. It's terrible. I don't understand how anyone thought that that was a good idea to just all of a sudden in Chapter 12 have a very bad tutorial. It doesn't make any sense. I think he's misunderstanding that one, or I'm misunderstanding the, the complaint there. But I, that's my problem with that specific endeavor, is that it shouldn't exist and you shouldn't be gated by an endeavor in the story. It, it, it breaks the flow of things. I don't like it. Next. Uh, players also want more quests where they can use the autoplay and speed features. For example, players wish the feature were quite more supported for the defensive battles and Coliseum quest and Fire Emblem Heroes event. What do you think about this feedback? I am sorry about the defensive battles. and statement. Alright, next one. <laughs> uh, due to development circumstances, we did not have the time to support the autoplay. 100%. Okay, so... Well, let me finish. We did not have time to support the autoplay feature, but we want to work defensive battles into future events as well, so we are hoping to add the autoplay feature in the next set at some point. However, there are quests that the operation team wants players to actually play rather than using the autoplay feature, so we want to strike that balance. It's true that coming together as a team and using stickers while fighting is fun too. I also think that there are those who might want to play using autoplay, then take control of important parts, so we continue to make uh, making adjustments. That's actually kind of interesting because, well, first of all, I think that kind of confirms that defenses, the, the Fire Emblem Heroes event was not finished when they launched that thing. It felt kind of undone. It felt half-baked. And to be fair, that was right around the start of the Corona stuff. So, yeah, that was the big, that was when, like, I got the notice that it was like, stay home. You work from home now. Um, so I understand on that part. In terms of auto battle, it's always going to be very difficult. I think that um, there's definitely, there should be parts where it's like, no, play dude. Like literally just take take control of the reins. And there are some battles where it's like, ah, oh, just let me auto battle. But you know, it's a very delicate balance because if everything was auto battle, auto battle in this uh, game, I think that would actually be kind of bad. I think I agree on that part. So it's a delicate balance. Apparently, many players voiced the opinion that the difficulty level was just right for Ciliara's Ciala? Ciala? Wrath. Ciala is the water-attuned boss that we added to the Aguido Uprising at the end of April. Each time we added bosses of the high difficulty level, we kept an eye on clear rates, clear times, the might of those who cleared the quest, and all the player feedback. And then we can use that information to consider how to make adjustments to the next one. I think the fact that Ciala's Wrath received mostly good feedback is a result of looking at previously released quests like Advanced Dragon Trials, Volk's Wrath, and Kai Yan's Wrath, then making adjustments to balance that. Some players are clearing the quest in solo play rather than co-op play, but that there was also a lot of feedback that the difficulty level was just right because while it has challenging, players are also able to clear it. While it is challenging, players are able also able to clear it. For that reason, we hope to continue making adjustments so we can keep an eye on player status. In regards to the Agito Uprising, we also recently added another difficulty level, Volk's, Ma Ra Volk's Wrath Master. In this way, we can hope to keep making it possible for various players to enjoy the game. It might be a little difficulty, but I hope difficult, but I hope you can work and clear it. Um, yeah, I think they're doing pretty good. After the basic misstep that was Cayenne, I felt like Cialo was much better. Um, I think Volk's Wrath Master is pretty tough, but it's not as tough as any of the High Dragon Trials, really, to me, um, which was my fear going in, so it felt like very fair to me. Um, I think they're striking the right balance. I also think that all the Igitos are more fun than any of the High Dragon Trials. The High Dragon Trials are just, like, not fun to me, personally. It's a personal thing. Uh, you can do it, disagree on that. It's all good. We have a question for us... <laughs> We have a question from us this time as well. While building a team, there are so many different worm prints, accurate, to choose from. What criteria should players use to select worm prints? The first things many players who are clearing the high difficulty content look for a worm print that increases skill damage. For example, you can greatly increase the power of your skills. If the worm print ability says that the increased skill is towards 40% and you equip the sword adventure with the worm print, there are a variety of worm prints that boost skill damage. 
but they're all quite strong. So I think starting by equipping those is a good idea. An example is the second worm print. If the adventurer is strong against poison enemies, you can equip the worm print with poison punisher, and then that will further increase your strength when you fight an enemy that is poisoned. Will that take effect even using against enemies that have resistance? It won't take effect against enemies with resistance, but burn paralysis and poison can be applied to quite a few enemies. So you can get stronger by equipping worm prints like that. So you're saying it's important to really get the no worm prints for an individual basis. Laugh. I hope that's helpful information for everyone else. All right. Um, good questions, I think. Um, a lot of interesting stuff to find in here. Uh, not everything I agreed with, obviously. The Endeavor stuff is something that really... Um, I mean, yes, we weapon, cra weapon crafting is bad, but I also think that this Endeavor... The, the do make a weapon for an Endeavor should not exist. It just shouldn't exist if it gates the story. It doesn't make any sense to me. That's me, though. Tell me about what you feel about this. Tell me if you're hyped for the new events. Hopefully we get some info and a banner info tomorrow. I would love it. Um, I should also mention now, I'm going to leave a link to it down below, because I know if everyone who's, who's made it this far into it really like me, I have a Twitch now. I've started twitching. I only, twi I only start streaming at midnight California time, so it's super late at night. It's the midnight hour. Um is what I call it. And I'm currently playing through Ray Rayman 2 The Great Escape. So if you want to follow me on Twitch, you can see me there. There's some videos on there and some different stuff from the Jigalia stuff. It's current, well, except for actually the, there was some gotcha talk in the second episode. Anyway, if you want to follow me on Twitch, that exists. Um, but yeah, that's the end of today's video, everyone. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to leave a like, comment about how you feel about specifically the questions answered here. I think there were some good questions, some good answers, one very bad answer, and the rest okay. No, the rest, one bad answer, the rest good. Don't, why are you doing this, Wokey? Anyway, <laughs> that's the end of today's video, everyone. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.